Good morning, Judy. Can you hear everything okay today? Okay, good. All right, good morning. Good morning, Ryan. All right, do we have any preliminary matters before the jury comes out? Um, yes, we would just ask leave uh, for Ryan to please publish our brief demonstrative. All right, there's no objection to that? People have changed places here. I just want to make sure I look in the right place. Okay, we're good. It's a blank screen uh, right now, so we would ask to publish it now. Okay, if it's a blank screen, it's hard to see if it's working or not. It is published, Thank you. but it's just a blank screen, I guess. Okay, we're going to hope that's that's it then. All right, thank you. Anything other else we have? All right, we're ready for the jury. Okay, great. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have a seat? All right. Are we ready with opening statements? Yes, Ron. All right, go ahead, sir. Good morning. My name is Ben Chu. My colleagues and I from Brown Rudnick are truly honored to represent the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp. This is a case about the impact of Amber Heard's words on Johnny Depp, specifically the words that she used in an op-ed published in the Washington Post in December 2018, which is shown on the screens. And the op-ed was published, and this is no accident, the evidence will show, on the eve of her first major acting role in the movie Aquaman. The evidence will show that's no coincidence. The evidence will show the words that Ms. Heard used which are the subject of Mr. Depp's defamation suit against her. And there are three statements that we respectfully ask each of you to focus on. Statement number one, quote, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. Statement number two, two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. And I want to repeat that because you're going to hear that throughout the case because the timing here is critical. Two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. Statement number three, quote, I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse, unquote. Ms. Heard did not use Mr. Depp's name in the op-ed. She didn't have to. She didn't have to because the evidence will show that everyone in Hollywood, where Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard both have their careers, and many others outside Hollywood, knew exactly what she was talking about. When she used the word, two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. That's because, as the evidence will show, and you will hear, two years earlier, on May 27, 2016, Ms. Heard had publicly accused Johnny Depp, her husband at the time, of domestic abuse. You will learn during the trial that Ms. Heard's actions were prompted by Mr. Depp's request for a divorce. He wanted out, which drove her to concoct, to make up a story that was, at first, designed to keep him. And then, when he made it clear that finally, after all he had endured, he was done, was designed to recast herself as an abuse survivor with Mr. Depp as the alleged abuser. The evidence will show that six days after Mr. Depp requested a divorce, and he did so politely, and three days after Ms. Heard's lawyer threatened Mr. Depp with claims of abuse if he did not agree to her financial demands, 
Ms. Hurd arrived at the courthouse in Los Angeles, California, to file for a restraining order alleging abuse. Ms. Hurd, the evidence will show that Ms. Hurd showed up with a mark on her face that mysteriously appeared six days after she last saw Mr. Depp. And, and six days before, she publicly filed a request for a domestic violence restraining order alleging abuse. The evidence will show that her publicist and the paparazzi were there at the courthouse to document the event, to make sure that Johnny Depp's name was forever associated with the image of an innocent, battered woman. It was a jolt. It was a shocking story splashed across front pages across the country. No one had ever in five decades accused Johnny Depp of being violent with a woman. No one had ever accused Mr. Depp of being violent with a woman. He had been in other long-term relationships. He had children. by choosing to lie about her husband for her own personal benefit, Amber Heard forever changed Mr. Depp's life and reputation. And you will hear him tell you the dreadful impact that it has had on his life. The evidence you will hear at this trial contradicts the story Ms. Heard presented to the world in May 2016 and again in December 2018. The evidence will show that the last time Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd saw each other before Ms. Hurd showed up in court on May 27, 2016, was May 21st. And that's a very important date. And I will ask you, please, to remember that through the trial. Mr. Depp's mother, Betty Sue, passed away on May 20th after a long illness when Johnny and his sister Christy had been taking care of, of his mother for a very long period of time. And for reasons that Mr. Depp will personally explain to you throughout the course of this trial, he had resolved to divorce Ms. Hurt. So on May 21st, Mr. Depp came by the apartment that he shared with Ms. Hurd in the Eastern Columbia Building, or the ECB, as some people refer to it, to tell her that, to pick up his things, and to say goodbye. There is no dispute that soon after Mr. Depp ended things with Ms. Hurd and left the apartment on May 21st, he got on a plane to head out on a European tour, a music tour, for months with his band, The Hollywood Vampires. And Ms. Hurd knew that he was going off on tour and out of state when she walked into court to get the restraining order, which she obtained ex parte. It's a Latin word, fancy word, but all it means is that Mr. Depp and his lawyer were not there and had no opportunity to be heard. That's what an ex parte order is. You will hear from the police officers who responded to a 911 call on May 21st after Mr. Depp left. The police officers will testify that they saw no injuries on Ms. Hurd. Both police officers will testify that they saw no injuries on Ms. Hurd. Nor did the police officers see any of the property damages that you will hear Ms. Hurd claims existed in the apartments that evening. And you will hear those officers under oath testify that there was no violence and that there was no crime. You will also hear from multiple witnesses who, like the police officers, saw Ms. Hurd between May 21 and May 26. Those are the crucial days between the alleged incident and the day she walked into court 
with her lawyer and got an ex parte order. And those witnesses will testify that they saw her without any marks, any signs of injury on her face. And you will hear from multiple witnesses, including Brandon Patterson, who is the manager of the Eastern Columbia building where Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd lived together. You will hear Mr. Pat Patterson say that, they, that he saw, and others will say as well, that they saw a surveillance video from the week of May 21st that showed Ms. Hurd's sister, Whitney, throw a fake punch at Ms. Hurd's face. Now let's just stop there. This is a surveillance video, video you will hear about where the sister of the alleged victim threw a fake punch at her sister, allegedly, which allegedly occurred this incident only a, a couple of days earlier. Ms. Hurd acting out being punched, responding to the fake punch, and the two laughing about it. So you have the alleged victim and the sister laughing about a fake punch. And you will have to decide for yourself, or we ask that you please decide for yourself, would anyone ever joke about that if there had been actual abuse? Much less ask yourself, would a sister ever joke with an alleged victim about being punched by her husband? Of course, none of this contradicting evidence was publicly available when Ms. Hurd walked into court on May 27th and got her restraining order. Instead, as you can imagine, the media storm was instantaneous. You will hear about and see some of that media coverage, which published pictures of Ms. Hurd walking into court and other pictures supposedly showing injuries supposedly caused by Mr. Depp, a man who had never been accused of abuse of a woman. The evidence will show that Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd eventually settled their divorce out of court. Thereafter, Ms. Hurd dismissed her restraining order against Mr. Depp. But Ms. Hurd's false claim that Mr. Depp had abused her remained in the public sphere. It didn't go away. The images were permanent. And the evidence will show that two years later, which is why we're pointing to that, that reference in the op-ed, in the wake of the Me Too movement, and just before the release of Ms. Hurd's role in the movie Aquaman, Ms. Hurd chose to remind the world about the festering allegations, this time under the banner of a national, international newspaper, the Washington Post. In the op-ed, in her op-ed, Ms. Hurd again painted herself as the innocent victim of abuse, but this time, this time with a wider audience primed to take action against an in industry powerhouses accused of abuse. The evidence will show that the clear implication in Ms. Hurd's op-ed that you have in front of you was that she was the victim of domestic abuse perpetrated by Mr. Depp. This trial is about clearing Mr. Depp's name of a terrible and false allegation. We ask you in the next several weeks to please Please carefully consider the evidence. Assess the reliability and credibility of that evidence and to make your own determination about what actually happened between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd 